I'm going to be telling you a story today called Matreshka. The original is by Becky Hickox Ayers, and I have my good friend here, my Matreshka dolls, to help me tell this story. Um, so I hope you enjoy. Once upon a time, deep in a forest, lived a wood carver and his granddaughter Katya. Every week, Katya would take the long road from the forest to the town of Vyatka to trade her grandfather's wooden bowls and spoons for food. One day, as she was walking home, she came across an old woman on the path. Please give me some food, the old woman begged her. So Katya gave the old woman a loaf of bread. Oh, thank you. You're so kind, the old woman said. Here, this is for you. I carved and painted her myself. She handed Katya a wooden doll. Her name is Matreshka. May she be a good friend to you. Katya thanked the old woman, put the doll in her pocket, and went on her way. But it grew dark early, and a cold wind started to blow. Snow started to fall, and soon her path was hidden. Katya was lost in the woods. Soon, though, she came across a very strange house. It stood on chicken legs and was surrounded by a tall wooden fence. Katya went up to the door and knocked. Knock, knock, knock. An old, haggard-looking woman opened the door. Oh, you poor thing, come in from the cold. You are so lucky to have found Baba Yaga's house. Here, sit down by my fire and have some tea while I go make you a bed upstairs. So Katya sat by the fire and sipped some hot tea, grateful to have found this strange but warm house. Let me out, let me out, she heard a tiny voice saying. She looked around, but didn't see anyone anywhere. Then she realized it was coming from her pocket. She took out the doll Matreshka, who began warming her hands by the fire. I was as cold as cold can be. Now may I please have a little tea? Katya held the glass to her and she took dainty sips, but she jumped back into Katya's pocket when Baba Yaga returned. There now, already, you must be very tired. Let me show you to your room. So the old woman led Katya up the stairs and down several long halls to a small room where she fell into an exhausted sleep. When the bright sun woke her, Katya hurried to the door to be on her way, but she found it locked. Help! Help! she called through the door. Baba Yaga came, and instead of opening the door, she peered through the window in it to laugh at Katya. Wanting to leave so soon? I'm afraid my magic spell isn't quite ready, but don't worry, my dear, it won't take long. I do believe you'll make a lovely goose for Sunday's dinner. <laughs> Baba Yaga disappeared down the hallway. Katya pulled and pulled on the door, but it was shut tight. Let me try, said the little voice from her pocket. Katya lifted Matreshka from her apron pocket. How can you open the door if I can't? Matreshka, Matreshka, I may be small, but I'm just as handy as someone tall. Lift me up to see out the door, and in a moment we may know more. So Katya lifted Matreshka to the small window at the top of the door. Matreshka leaned about and then hopped around in excitement. Ha! There is the latch holding the key. If I could reach it, I'd set us free. Here, Katya said, I will tie my scarf around you and lower you down. Within moments, the door was open and Katya stood in the hallway, wondering which way to go. All of the doors looked alike, and after she opened the first one, it screeched so loudly that the dog in the yard started barking. <coughs> if only you were a bit smaller, Matreshka, I could roll you under the door and find a way out. Matreshka, Matreshka, I'm oh so small, but not the smallest one of all. With that, Matreshka spun three times, and out popped an even smaller Matreshka doll. Wow, look at that. So she's got two Matreshkas now. She scurried down the hall, rolling under each door until she found the one that led to the stairs. Katya opened it very slowly and tiptoed down to the kitchen. 
The witch was not to be seen, and the door to the yard stood open. They crept to the fence, but here they found the gate locked tight with no key in sight. The dog barked again, and Baba Yaga came running from the forest behind the house. Oh, Matryoshka, cried Katya, if only one of you were a little smaller, you could put your arms inside the keyhole under the lock. The second Matryoshka said, Matryoshka, Matryoshka, I'm oh so small, but not the smallest one of all. She spun three times and out popped another, even smaller Matryoshka. Katya lifted her to the keyhole and she had the latch open in a second. Katya scooped up all three of the dolls and ran into the woods, but the witch was soon close enough to cast a binding spell that made it impossible for Katya and the dolls to go any farther. She watched helpless as Baba Yaga laid a circle of magic rope around them. There now, no one inside the magic circle can step over the rope, and only someone on the outside can move it. So you'll stay put while I get the things I need to turn you into a goose. <laughs> Katya and the dolls tried for several minutes to step over the rope, but they could not. They noticed a small mouse hole in the ground in the center of the circle. Oh, Matryoshka, sighed Katya, if only one of you were a little smaller, you could climb down this mouse hole and find a way to the other side. The third Matryoshka clapped her hands and said, Matryoshka, Matryoshka, I'm oh so small, but not the smallest one of all. She spun three times and out popped a fourth, even smaller Matryoshka doll. Wow, look at that. So she's got one, two, three... Four Matryoshkas. Look at all the Matryoshkas. So, this fourth Matryoshka crawled into the little mouse hole in the center of the circle. And she climbed as fast as she could to the other end of the burrow. But by the time she appeared at the other end of the mouse's hole, Baba Yaga returned. And before they could go three steps, her magic once again brought them to a stop. Now the witch was in a rage. You miserable child! I'll not wait until Sunday. I'll have you for dinner tonight! Just as Baba Yaga started chanting her magic spell, Katya saw the fourth Matryoshka behind Baba Yaga, spinning around and moving her lips. Matryoshka, Matryoshka, I'm oh so small, but we need the smallest one of all. The last Matryoshka popped out, and she was no taller than Katya's thumb. Look at how tiny this Matryoshka is. She scrambled up Baba Yaga's dress and perched in her ear, whispering to confuse her as she cast her spell. Chink it up, pink it up, magic juice. Now turn Taka into a goose. But of course, Baba Yaga had said the name wrong, and the spell didn't work. Katya did not turn into a goose. Baba Yaga's temper increased. She stamped her foot and tried again. Henry, Penry, whirl and twirl. Now turn Katya into a girl. This didn't work either. By now, Baba Yaga was red all over, and she screamed her next spell with the smallest Matryoshka still whispering in her ear. Floppity, moppity, grin and grog. Baba Yaga is now a frog. Ribbit. This time, the spell did work, and as all the Matryoshkas hopped back into Katya's pocket, a very angry frog bounded away. That's amazing. So all these Matryoshkas finally defeated the witch. Wow. Now, later that day, Katya found the path back to her grandfather's cottage. And from that time on, she spent many happy hours playing with the little wooden dolls. And Katya never got lost in the forest again. I hope you have enjoyed this tale of the Rushing Nesting Dolls Matryoshka, originally told by Becky Hickox Ayers. <laughs>